Hello everybody, today we're going to take a quick look at Jurassic World Dominion. This was directed and co-written by Colin Trevorrow and stars Chris Pratt, Bryce Dallas Howard, Sam Neill, Laura Dern, and Jeff Goldblum. And in this latest installment of the Jurassic Park slash World franchise, our heroes need to stop a genetic research company from unleashing an army of genetically altered giant locusts, which threaten to eat the entire world supply of crops, except for the ones that the same company has created, so they can take over the world's food supply. Also, there are dinosaurs. This was weird. And dumb. And after Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, I kind of expected that, but Fallen Kingdom was still at least entertaining in its own way. This was just big, dumb, and loud. Top Gun Maverick showed what a great sequel should look like. Jurassic World Dominion did the opposite of that. If you saw the last Jurassic World movie, you'll recall that at the end, our heroes unleashed the dinosaurs on the world because they are stupid. And this has somehow had a shockingly minimal effect on people's everyday lives. Giant aquatic dinosaurs have made crab fishing a bit more difficult, but really that's about it. Shocking though it may seem, the dinosaurs are almost an afterthought in what is supposed to be a Jurassic Park movie. The dinosaurs are always there, but it's remarkable how little they have to do with the plot and how little people in this now dinosaur-filled modern world seem to care. Instead, this is about giant locusts and monopolizing the world's food production. Which sounds like the plot of a really bad James Bond movie. And it's a really bloated mess. They not only brought back the heroes from the Jurassic World half of this franchise, but they also brought back Sam Neill, Laura Dern, and Jeff Goldblum from the original Jurassic Park. And... They both have their own plots going on, and they are connected by the thinnest of threads. It's just trying to do way too much at once, and it's really not working. What each set of heroes is doing easily could have been its own movie, and probably should have been. They even went to the trouble of bringing back the Lewis Dodgson character, who had a much more prominent role in the books, and... I'm really not sure why they went to that trouble, because this character who is the head of this evil genetic research company could have been literally anyone. B.D. Wong's character is also still around and gets a sort of redemption in this movie, though I don't feel like it's ever really earned, it just kind of happens. Now, it certainly was nice to see Dern, Neil, and Goldblum again. I'm happy to see these characters come back, and they slipped right back into these roles with ease. And unlike his brief appearance in Fallen Kingdom, Goldblum is giving us the full Goldblum. Praise it be. And this is apparent the very first time we see him on camera, where he is apparently giving a lecture at some sort of university that is on the campus of this genetic research company. And every line he says, his voice goes up, as if every statement is also a question. Uh, it's glorious. No notes. But as great as it is to see these guys again, I just wish they had been given a better story to work with. And even when we get to the inevitable moment when the two sets of heroes finally meet up, it doesn't amount to anything. It's like, yay, we're all together now. Okay. Now what? The movie did have some cool moments. Uh, somehow that big team up at the end was not one of them. It really should have been, but it wasn't. But there is a scene where Chris Pratt has to outrun some velociraptors on a motorcycle through the streets of Malta. Really fun scene. There is also a point in the movie where we get a bunch of dead, giant, flaming locusts raining from the sky. I'm not going to bother giving you context for that, because it really doesn't matter. The visual alone is just amazing. It is also as unintentionally hilarious as it sounds. There are also some moments where they really dropped the ball. During the scene where the two sets of heroes meet up, there's this... what is supposed to be a very intense moment where they have to escape from a bunch of Dilophosaurus, and it just falls flat. It's very poorly shot, there's no sense of where everything is in relation to everything else, and what should have been a really cool moment and a great callback to the original Jurassic Park just 
failed. In the end, Jurassic World Dominion had its moments, but overall was just a waste of time and talent. I do not recommend paying to see this in a theater. If it shows up on streaming or cable, you can give it a watch just for Malcolm's lecture and the motorcycle chase, but once that chase is over, you can turn it off. And that's all I have to say about Jurassic World Dominion. Till next time, take care.